Um, when I was growing up uh, in Liverpool, um, growing up in Anfield, there used to be this poor guy, and he was uh, called Soft Harry, or in Scouts, Soft Harry, or one word, Soft Harry. Uh, and what happened to poor old Harry was that during the war, when he was a child, um, a bomb dropped on his house. Um, and he was hit by slates and plaster and all sorts, uh, and cognitively it affected him. So he used to be turned out in the morning by his poor mother to roam the streets, uh, and he used to make the sound of a gun. And you'd hear Harry actually coming, uh, he'd suddenly coming down the street going, <laughs> like that, and you knew Harry was coming. And the kids used to taunt him, and it was awful. Um, and in the fall under the care of the community, just turned on the street. Um, and I learned a lesson from my mother one day, uh, and it was a sort of a wee turning point in uh, an epiphany. And Harry was coming up the road, and he was always sort of badly dressed in this sort of almost this long Yosa Hughes coat. Uh, he gave the impression, the physical impression, of danger when in fact he was harmless. But I, I was fine with him. As I was with my mother, and Harry was coming up the road, uh, always on shame. And of course, going back then, people went on, men went on shame. And um, he, <clears throat> as he came forward, and I hid behind my mother, and my mother just said to him, Hi, Harry, how are you doing? And he changed and said, I'm all right, sir. And then carried on making his gun sound, going past. And so I, that has always stayed with me. Uh, and there's, um, again, you know, people who seemingly uh, lose it uh, as they get older. There was a man who used to live uh, just a street away from us, and his house was an absolute tip. Uh, it really was. Um, inside and out. So I wanted to write a sort of corrective poem for kids. This is called Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris lives next door in a house of cats. I think it rains every day in there because when you walk past, you can smell the damp. Mr. Harris used to have a mouldy green fence at the front, but it fell down and now it lies there like driftwood Mr. Harris used to go to sea, to Africa and South America. Perhaps he was a pirate, because in his back garden there's a big wooden chest that's mouldy too, and some stone statues of birds, a pelican, an osprey, and a rusty oven, and a sundial, and a stale piano. I think he must have brought all of these treasures home and then forgot about them. Some nights I hear him through the walls, hammering and drilling. Maybe he's building a cabin or a crow's nest from where he'll look for new lands, nowhere near here, which is where he used to live, on the ocean, and not like now, on his own. Some people think Mr. Harris is very odd, and that his house is a disgrace. But what do you expect? He's very old, and there being no retirement homes for old pirates, he makes do with his own round shackle. One. And one poem just to finish. Uh, yeah. It's called Zoo Trip. Describe to me the chimpanzee, Mrs. Taylor said. But I was just half listening, wrote something else instead. The chimpanzee is a small fried flower. <laughs> <laughs> it's purple, but don't chew it. It also comes in yellow. I don't know who first grew it. Mrs. Taylor kept me in after school. Thank you. <laughs>